Okay, in this lesson, we will be solving linear equations that have variables on both sides, identifying special solutions of linear equations, and using linear equations to solve real life problems. So the core concept here, to solve an equation with variables on both sides, simplify one or both sides of the equation if necessary. Now that means combine like terms, or use the distri distributive property, or anything else that you need to make uh, sure each side is as simplified as possible. Then use inverse operations to collect the variable terms on one side, collect the constant terms on the other side, and isolate the variable. And we're going to go over what that means right now. All right, so for our first example, we have 10 minus 4x equals negative 9x. Well, we want to see if both sides are simplified. And we see that we have 10 minus 4x, can't do anything there, and then negative 9x. We don't have any like terms, we don't have any parentheses to do. So now I just have to move all my variables on one side and move my constants to another side. And when I say move, I mean use addition or subtraction to move my terms. So what I'm going to do now is I have a negative 4x right here, and over here I only have x terms. So if I move this negative 4x term, then it will, I'll, I'll only have my x terms on the right side and my constants on the left side. So I'm going to add 4x to move it. But once again, if I add on the left, I have to do it on the right. And now, I'm going to rewrite this as 10 equals negative 5x, because negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, and we bring our x with us. Now I just have a one-step equation. Uh, I look at my, my x term. It's, this is negative 5 times x. I always want to see what's happening to my x. I'm multiplying, so to cancel that out, I can divide by negative 5 on both sides. And then I get x is equal to negative 2. To check my answer, I can plug this back in. Uh, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. 8 plus 10 is 18. Over here, negative 9 times po uh, negative 2 is positive 18 as well. So we know that our answer is correct. All right, so for this example, we have 3 times quantity 3x minus 4 is equal to 1 fourth times the quantity three, uh, sorry, 32x plus 56. So I do not have simplified sides, either on the left or the right here. I need to distribute uh, my parentheses on both of these sides. So what I'm going to do is start by distributing the 3 on the left side. So 3 times 3x is 9x, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So I'm going to rewrite this. And then on the right side, I have 1 fourth that I'm going to distribute. And remember, multiplying by 1 fourth is the exact same thing as dividing by 4. So I'm just going to think of this as dividing by 4. This, is, this right here, just as a quick side note, is the exact same thing as 32x plus 56 all over 4. This is the exact same thing. So I'm just going to think of it as division. So 32x divided by 4 is 8x. And then 56 divided by 4 is 14. So now what I want to do is I want to move all of my variables to one side and move my constants to the other side because I don't have any simplification to do. So I, I see that this 8x is smaller than this 9x. For some reason, I like having my variables uh, be positive whenever they can be. In this case, it's actually going to save us a step. But So I'm going to subtract this 8x to move it over here. And I'm going to put my minus 8x underneath the minus 9x. I'm going to bring my like terms together. Okay. So now I could just stop right here, but Instead, I'm actually going to uh, end up moving my constant to the other side in the same step. You can do that. You don't have to. If you didn't do that, it would look like this. We'd have x minus 12 equals 14, and then you could solve this one-step equation and then be on your way. But if you would like to save yourself a step, which I would, as I move this 8x term over to the left side using minus 8x, I'm going to move this negative 12 by adding 12 in the same step. So basically all I'm doing is I am adding a negative 8x and a positive 12 to both sides, or I'm subtracting 8x and adding 12 to both sides, same exact thing, okay? And I'm doing the exact same thing on both sides, so I'm allowed, totally allowed to do this. And this 9x minus 8x is going to be super helpful because it's just going to be 1x, which is just x, which is what I'm looking for. These 12s cancel, and then here these 8s cancel, so all I'm left with 14 plus 12, which is 26, which is my final answer. All right, so you can take a look at this core concept, but basically we're going to be introducing the no solution case and the infinitely many solution case. Um, so we're going to go over those right now. I'll start with A. I'm going to zoom in a bit. So I have 3 times quantity 5x plus 2 is equal to 15x. So there's actually two ways you can do this. You could distribute this 3 first, or you could divide this 3 on both sides. 
Um, I what I'll do is I I will distribute for this one and then I'll divide for part B. But you can do either way. So I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to get 15x plus 6. That equals 15x. All right, so something looks fishy because I have a 15x on both sides. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my variables. And I want to move this 15x over here. So I'm going to subtract 15x. But I have to do it on both sides. And now things are getting a bit odd. So these cancel. So I'm going to get 6. And then over here, these cancel as well. I have 15x minus 15x. But what does canceling mean for addition and subtraction? Well, if these cancel out, that really means that they go to 0. For addition and subtraction, canceling means get to 0. For multiplication and division, canceling means get to 1. But in this case, it's 0. Anything minus itself is 0. So I get 6 equals 0. Well, what, what this is saying is that this equation is true when 6 is equal to 0. Well, 6 is never equal to 0, so when is this equation true? Never. This is a no solution case. This equation has no solutions. So we would write no solution. So anytime you see something like this that makes absolutely no sense, never going to be true, like 6 equals 0, 10 equals negative 5, any two numbers that do not equal each other, if that's what you get when your variables disappear, this is a no solution case. If we go over to part B, I'll move over. Now for part B, I said that I was going to divide over here, uh, which I could do, but now that I see this other term, uh, it's not worth it. I'm going to distribute again. But if you wanted, you could divide every single term here. You could divide this side and this negative 8y and this negative 2 if you wanted. But I'm just going to distribute to keep things simple. So I have negative 8y minus 2 equals negative 8y minus 2. Well, I have the same exact thing on both sides. And we'll talk about this in a little bit, but let's just continue uh, solving our, pro our problem. Well, I want to move my variables on one side. So I'm gonna, let's say I want to move this negative 8y over here. Well, I'm going to add 8y on both sides. But if we see this, both 8y's are going to cancel out. So all I'm left with is negative 2 equals negative 2. Don't forget to bring down the negative, especially here. A common mis mistake is to forget this. I uh, bring down this negative. But anyway, I have negative 2 equals negative 2. Well, I'm solving for y here. There's no y left. So what this means is this equation, our original equation, is true when negative 2 is equal to negative 2. Well, negative 2 always equals negative 2. There's no situation where it doesn't. So we know that this is always true. So that means every value of x that we can think of, or sorry, every value of y is going to be true. So this is an infinitely many solution case. So in this case, you can technically put y equals all, re all real numbers, or you can rewrite it as all values of y. But if it asks for the number of solutions, you say infinitely many. So this is the infinitely many solutions case. The actual y value is all y values. So this is true anytime we see anything like this. So negative 2 equals negative 2. 0 equals 0. 10 equals 10. Any number that equals itself. Also, uh, if you got down to y equals y, that would be the, the same uh, case as well. Now, if you notice at the top right here, we have the exact same terms on the left and right side. We have a negative 8y. We have a negative 8y. We have a negative 2. We have a negative 2. This is the exact same value. So you could technically stop here and jump right to this all values of y infinitely many solutions. Uh, but either way, that is how to do that type of problem. All right. So a boat leaves New Orleans and travels upstream on the Mississippi River for four hours. The return trip takes only 2.8 hours because the boat travels three miles per hour faster downstream due to the current. How far does the boat travel upstream? Well, we know that the boat travels upstream and downstream the exact same amount because we're returning from our destination. We're starting somewhere, we're going to our destination, and we're, there is a return trip. So we can assume that the distance is going to be the same. Okay, so let's look at how long it took us. So the journey upstream took four hours. So the distance is going to be our rate times our time. Well, let's, let's call x the rate upstream. So to figure out the distance, 
upstream, we know that we, that we just multiply the number of hours by our rate. So that's going to be 4x. So the distance for d equals 4x. Okay. Well, we can also figure out a different way to write the distance, because that's downstream. Okay. So let's look at this. Downstream, the boat travels 3 miles per hour faster than the upstream trip. Well, our upstream rate is x miles per hour. And if, it, if the downstream is 3 miles per hour faster than x, that's just x plus 3, or 3 plus x. Okay. So the, the rate downstream is x plus 3. I'm just going to write down for downstream. And then to figure out uh, how far the return trip is in terms of downstream, it only took 2.8 hours. So I just have to multiply 2.8 times my downstream rate, which is x plus 3. So this, I guess this d right here is going to be d up. This one's going to be d down. You don't need to do all of this stuff, but this is the easiest way for me to explain it. So our downstream rate is just 2.8 times this whole quantity, x plus 3. And when I say the whole quantity, that means I need to include parentheses around it. So that's going to be 2.8 parentheses x plus 3. All right, now that I have everything, I can make an equation. Well, in this case, we know that the distance upstream is the exact same distance as downstream. Okay, So I can set an equation. I can set this 4x equal to 2.8 times the quantity x plus 3. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, so now that I've written my equation, I can figure out what I need to do to solve this equation. And I see that my equation is not simplified, so I'm going to distribute this 2.8. I get 4x equals 2.8x, 8.4. You can do that out if you want. I'm going to scroll up a bit. So now to solve for x, what I want to do is I want to get all my variables on one side and all my constants on the other side. Well, my right side has constants and both sides have variables. So I'm just going to move this variable away from this constant. And I'm going to move this positive 2.8x term by subtracting it on both sides. Okay. So now I have 4x minus 2.8x. If I treat this like 4.0x, or 4.0, I should say, minus 2.8x. I'm going to get 1.2x when this simplifies. These cancel. So then this equals 8.4. Okay. So now I have 1.2 being multiplied by x. So to cancel that out, I'm going to divide by 1.2 on both sides. And I can just treat this like the decimals aren't here if I wanted to, which is really just 84 divided by 12. And that's going to give me 7. So I know that x equals 7. But we need to look at what our question is asking before we uh, decide that we're done. So I'm going to go back up to what the problem is saying. How far does the boat travel upstream? Well, x is the rate upstream, OK? x plus 3 is the rate downstream. We, are, we want to know the distance, OK? So the distance here and here are the same. And I think the uh, plugging in x to this is going to be a little bit easier here, but you can plug into either of these two, distance upstream or distance downstream. You're still going to get the exact same thing. I'm going to choose this one because it looks easier. So I'm going to scroll down here. My distance equals 4x, which is distance equals 4 times 7, which is 28. And any word problem, I like to have a word answer. How far does the boat travel upstream? We know our rate is in miles per hour. And we know we travel for four hours. So I know that this distance has to be in miles. So the boat traveled 28 miles upstream. And now we are done with that one.